Matsya Avatar. So as the pastime goes in a previous day of Lord Brahma, so not this day, the previous day of Lord Brahma, near the end of it, one day, King Satyabrata is uh, meditating in the river and when he cupped his palms, he saw a little fish and he was very uh, enamored by that fish. So and the fish spoke to him, oh this, this place is too small for me, please take care of me. So he took the fish and put in his little water pot, very tiny fish. And uh, a few hours later, the fish grew so much that it wouldn't fit in the water pot anymore. So he took the fish and put it into a bigger vessel. And lo and behold, a little time passed and that, little, that fish wouldn't fit in that water pot anymore. And so he tried to find bigger and bigger water reservoirs and the fish outgrew very quickly each reservoir. Finally it became so gigantic that that was the fish that would carry King Satyabrata and all the sages across the waters of what we say pralaya or uh, annihilation from one day of Brahma to the next day. So for me I thought, at least for me I thought it was fitting that the way the fish grew from one pot to another didn't fit in its uh, vessel. That's the story of this kind of neighborhood. We first started in a small uh, townhouse in Hanover Park a few years ago. And lo and behold, before we knew, we had outgrown that place. Then we moved into uh, a house in Oswego. Big backyard, big frontier, bigger house than the Hanover Park house. And about a year and a half later, we realized that we are outgrowing that place as well. And we were not looking for this uh, location in Naperville. It just happened to come by. Uh, that story some other time, but one thing after another, it just seemed to work out so quickly that we have this beautiful place at 1505 McDowell Road. And guess what? We're feeling that we may be outgoing that place as well. So here are some statistics about what is happening uh, in terms of how many people come. We have, I can't read from here. Uh, 125 number of devotees regularly attending our Sunday feast. Someone help me because I can't read from you. I am still working on getting eyes behind my head. But those who can read, please. Can someone read loudly for me? Summer camp. So we started summer camp for children uh, about uh, 10 years ago. And uh, each year, the number of children coming to our summer camp grew to such a state that now we have two summer camps. And this summer camp, specifically in Naperville, we have, we have to limit it to 60, just because we are constrained by space. Uh, if, if we didn't have that constraint, this number would be at least 120 or more. And we have started small with Bhakti Vrikshas and Bhagavad Gita discussions. So among the devotees who come, these are the persons who are seriously taking up the study of the Bhagavad Gita in a systematic manner. There are more than 1400 Indian families in Naples in India. The reason that statistic is there is not because that's the only group that we are interested in. It's just that to give a sense of if that's how big Indian community is. Just imagine how big Naperville is in terms of the audience that are available uh, for becoming serious practitioners or becoming more interested in knowing 
what the Hare Krishna movement is all about. So the point here is uh, the, the field is very big, the opportunities are large and we are ready to move in that direction. And there is only one uh, Vedic place of worship in Naperville. There are other places in Aurora, uh, Le Mont, etc. But in Naperville, we are the only place. Now something interesting is, uh, an interesting fact is, many persons uh, sometimes understand that the ISKCON center is a place of worship only. Because they are called temples, they definitely are temples. And uh, unlike other temples, something that ISKCON takes very seriously is education. Education of ourselves and education of the public. Uh, so we, we, we have programs for adults, for children, etc. So that it's not just coming to a temple. I had some. Ex I had an experience many years ago before I uh, took up practicing Krishna consciousness. So I would visit uh, the temples in the area, and I would go to a temple, very nice temples, very very nice. I would offer my respects and obeisances to the deities, and sit there for a few minutes, and come back home. And that was a very nice experience. But no one of these temples ever spoke to me. No one ever asked me if I knew what I would do. No one ever explained to me uh, how to pray. Generally, people have a tendency to pray asking for something. Asking for relief from some difficulty or asking for money, asking for some uh, material blessings or gifts for family members, etc. But when I started visiting the Hare Krishna temple, the first time I ever heard that the purpose of coming to a temple is to pray, asking for serving God. There's a story that there was one devotee, a sannyasi in our movement, who visited some families and one of those family members was narrating to uh, the Swami, Oh, Maharaj, I, from my childhood, I have great affection for Krishna. And Krishna has done, when I was a young child, Krishna took care of me in this particular way. And then when I was a young man, Krishna took care of me and my family in that particular way. And then throughout, he was narrating the different stages of life, that Krishna was doing something or the other, uh, favoring this person and this family. So after about 10 minutes of narrating on all the different ways Krishna had taken care of this person or Krishna had done something for this person, the sannyasi, the Swami asked the person, Oh, very nice. It seems like Krishna has done a lot for you. What have you done for Krishna? And for that person it was a, almost like an aha moment that, oh, you're supposed to do something for Krishna. So the idea of praying or coming to a temple, or rather usually, uh, I guess sometimes misunderstood fact is when we come to a temple, we say, I've come for darshan. Correct? And generally we understand darshan means we are standing and we are seeing Krishna. I've come to see Krishna. But it's described that the actual reason for coming to the temple is so that Krishna can see us. We think that we are the seers and that Krishna is the seen. It's actually the other way around. We come in front of Krishna so he may see us. And by Krishna seeing us, we become recipients of his mercy. Because Krishna is called, uh, Krishna's mercy is called Kadaksha. Merciful glance. So like that, we, we take education very seriously. Our founder Acharya Shri Prabhupada wrote volumes and volumes of books to make sure that people 
people are educated in what their relationship with Krishna is. So when you bring for uh, your dinner, there is a book table there. Please do make sure that you stop by. I was told by the devotees there that they are encouraging you to explore Srimad Bhagavatam, all 12 cantos of it. The devotees are right there, so I encourage you to please stop by. So that's that's the purpose. That there is one place where there is education, there is worship, and community. So here are some testimonials of what we've been hearing from the persons who've been visiting our center for some time. I the Center for the first time in my very important Bishop because uh, I was going on and somebody told me, you know, the, the property has been closed so that it's probably something like that. And this was one of the most exciting pieces that I heard. Um, because primarily because the, 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 all, all the devotees were taking, you know, taking out the hospital, they to come all the way, you know, all the way to the hospital. No matter when it shines, so you know, they would come, they wanted to teach children, adults, you know, families of the small children. So it was a lot of hostile conditions, but still they were trying over 40 minutes, 50 minutes, far, far and come. Then as soon as I heard that it's right in the right next to everybody's home, this was one of the best news that I heard. And then, uh, apart from the congregation itself, you know, neighborhood has a huge potential. A lot of people that are in you know, neighborhood being, you know, chosen the number one city in the United States and having this concept of the number one, like, number one city of the United States. This is, this is a perfect opportunity for Krishna Krishna just to the purpose of Shabbat Jayana So this center, having so, uh, a city that has huge potential with having this kind of center, this is one of the best uses. What I feel that Devo Center is obviously different from other uh, charities, that if the women we enter the temple, we feel the positive energy and we feel that the compassion of all the devotees and their love towards the, the Lordships and how they want to serve each and every devotee in, in progressing their Krishna consciousness. So that keeps me coming back again and again and again. So different from other jungles and few things like it is very enriching and spiritually, emotionally and also socially. I feel it's more like personal, we kind of develop one wonderful relationship with all the devotees and we get to we get equal opportunity to serve Krishna. And I'm very glad to be a little bit here because of all the children's activities that the Devotee Center organizes, especially the Sunday school programs, the Minata classes, the Kanta and Kanta programs. Apart from that, they also have uh, what they call Gita camp every summer and they used to work in a tent or so. And this will be intense all around the uh, development of children, not only in the musical, but also on this, the spiritual side where they talk mostly about Krishna and uh, Krishna's pastimes. And this provides a very anchor and sheltered environment for kids and a very assuring uh, place for parents to bring up their children and to teach them about uh, Indian culture and uh, daily life. So I'm very grateful to this time she has to provide the neighborhood center to provide this thank you. Um, it's, it's very amazing that as you know, we go through our uh, material education through schools and colleges and we have teachers and professors and families who help us in, in learning our various subjects, but when we enter into our spiritual life, uh, we need that similar uh, kind of support structure. And the most amazing thing that we discovered about this temple was that the uh, infrastructure through community, through the help of senior devotees, um, through prasada, through Sunday programs and trainings and seminars was available to us, not just to us, but to the entire family, including kids. And so that has been our, uh, you know, very helpful in helping us learn and progress through our spiritual journey. And we put for about 150 devotees every Sunday. This is free prasada, and it's also combined with our systematic study of uh, literature, which talks about Sammandagyan, which is basically uh, who is God, who are we, and our relationship with God, which is very unique to our temple. And this 
also fosters a very healthy and nice environment in the temple which is seen by um, happy devotees. So we place a very heavy emphasis on devotee relationships and this helps us in, enga uh, in engaging devotees in a very enthusiastic manner uh, to serve Krishna all the time and uh, we are very happy to be part of this temple. Thank you so much. Yet doable. 
is to have that kitchen. A phase two is to create that community hall. A phase three would have additional classrooms also come up in that structure. And phase four and beyond is uh, we want to create an expanded altar, a hall. The vision is that in the next, how many ever years, five, ten years, to create a full-fledged uh, temple with Radha Krishna deities and Pujaris and Godis, like that. But there are small steps that we want to take to get there. So that's our uh, little vision. And we are asking for your help. We are asking for your help to help us make this uh, vision successful, make this vision complete. And our idea is uh, that many doing a little has big impact. So we are asking you to please uh, pledge a minimum of $500 so that the more of the persons, $500 or more, actually. And, uh, idea is to, tonight that you should pledge and we we have uh, one devotee standing right there, Stoka Krishna Prabhu. Please wave your hand, Stoka Krishna Prabhu. He has pledge forms in his hand. Uh, please take a pledge form and please make sure that uh, you can pledge uh, expressing your support for what we are trying to accomplish here. Because, like I said, it's, we, we tried different things and we thought $500 or more, that's, that's, that's a piece that many people can do uh, and many people doing a little is very helpful. So that's where we're going for. So thank you and uh, here's some uh, food for thought as you're thinking about it. If you are interested in pledging right now, you, you can raise your hand. I'd like to get a sense if there's someone like that. Well, thank you very much. Please make sure that you meet with Stoka Krishna Prabhu. You know Stoka Krishna Prabhu? Anyone else? I saw someone else. Hand. Well, thank you, Rakesh. Thank you. That's very nice. Anyone on this side? Thank you, Mataji. Shah, thank you. Uh, gentleman back there, thank you. Thank you. No, oh, Mataji, thank you very much as well. Thank you. So just one more time, please raise your hands so we get a number here. Just raise your hands again. Great. Thank you. Thank you for helping us generate the momentum and others during the evening that you can consider and uh, please step forward to help us uh, fulfill our vision from the Nepal Center. So what we're going to do now is break for dinner. Uh, there are boxed box dinner right there behind you. The church has requested us to not eat in the hall here. So we may... Oh, it's allowed. Okay, please do uh, collect your box. And while you're thinking about uh, uh, how you can support, uh, we'll come back and at 7.20. We have about 20 minutes. We'll come back in 20 minutes for the Kirtan program. Now, before we break up, uh, one final. Uh, tonight's event, uh, there are some very generous uh, sponsors that we'd like to acknowledge. Uh, Chirag and Etal Patel, uh, they're sponsoring tonight's Prasadam dinner uh, in honor of uh, their mother Nina Mataji and grandmother Pushpa Mataji. Uh, this hall that we have rented for tonight's program has been very kindly uh, sponsored by the Tyagi family. Very, very grateful to them as well. Thank you very much. And uh, before we break, His Holiness Ramapad Swami is here. Ramapad Swami is uh, our governing body commissioner for the Midwest area. A wonderful devotee, uh, wonderful teacher, uh, someone who's been rock solid uh, on the path of Krishna consciousness for over 40 years. And uh, especially guiding many of us here, being an inspirational figure. And he's come to grace the occasion tonight. I'm very grateful that he's here. Thank you, and to please uh, stop by and pick up your box dinner. Thank you. Hare Krishna.